Everybody excited to be here the last Sunday of the 2020? Come on, you can do better than that. God has kept you. That's something to be excited for. 300, come on now. The Lord has kept you through dangers seen and unseen. All year long, we've had trials and tribulations. We had heartaches and pains. We had some bad situations that came our way. But the Lord kept us all the way through. And here we are once again in the house of God. We ought to give God some praises for that. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you. I'm excited to be here. I don't know about you, but, you know, uh, I'm so used to, uh, you know, when the party is over, there's called something the after party, right? Have you ever been to an after party? I know, you know, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, we celebrated and we, you know, lifted up Jesus and we were so excited about our, our Savior being in a manger. But there's something about an after party. When everybody else goes home, there's still some few folks that still want to keep the party going. And I tell you, the Lord is still alive. He's still King of Kings. He's still Lord of Lords. He still rule and reign. Hallelujah. And we ought to have an after party here. That's what those shepherds did. They left. They left them praising the Lord. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. Christmas didn't stop for me. That was not a period for me. That was not, a, a, it was just a comma because guess what? There's more to come. Hallelujah. And we come this morning to lift up the Lord and to give him glory, honor, and praises. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you once again for this privilege and honor to be in the house of God. Amen? Amen. I am so grateful that the word of God is so powerful that it's like a hammer. It breaks stuff. It's like a mirror. It will give you a reflection of who you are and what you are. But not only that, it's like fire. If you allow it to be shut up in your bones, it will just, you know, all you got to do is hear the word of God and get excited about that fire, that, that word that's in you. Anybody excited about the word of God this morning? Amen. Amen. I tell you, this is, uh, I wish... Uh, you know, uh, Jesus is alive. We're not at a funeral this morning. We came to worship the Lord. Come on, let's give God a high praise. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to be before you long. I want to uh, share with you, uh, if you would, turn with me to Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Psalm 119. 105 to 112. Let me read that in your hearing, and then we'll pray and get into the Word of God. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord. According to your word, accept, I pray, the free will of offering of my mouth. O oh Lord, teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. For a few moments, I want to talk around the subject, turn on the light. Turn on the light. Look at your neighbor and say, turn on the light. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this great privilege to be in worship once again. It is an honor and a privilege. God, there's many that would love to be here this morning. 
But God, on this last Sunday of this year, you appointed us, set us aside, that we might be here to worship you, to give you the glory, the honor, and the praises that you're rightfully due. God, we come to give you a high praise, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would fill this room. Fill this room, Holy Spirit. Fill this room. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Heavenly Dove, with all your quickening might and power, and breathe afresh on us. Shekinah glory, fall in this place, we ask, that we might have an encounter with you. God, that we might see you in all your splendor and all your glory. But God, we pray even right now that you would hide me behind the cross, that only you, God, as we've sung over and over, get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praises. God, get all glory in this place. You rightfully deserve it. Move us. There's no celebrities here. There's nobody here performing. There's no show here. God, we want you to get the glory. We pause just now, God, that you might get glory in this place, God. Move by your spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do, how you're going to move, how you're going to set free, how you're going to deliver, how you're going to heal. We thank you in advance for moving by your spirit, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We live in a dark and perplexing world that offers us many paths. If we are careless about the paths we choose, we invite misery and ruin. Let's all agree this morning, y'all, that this year had many dark paths that we saw with our own eyes. Can we agree to that? Just say amen. We all have the propensity to wander down the wrong paths in life. It is like a light shining in a dark place. But the believer has a greater understanding of life and its purpose. We know where we came from, where we are going, and how we are to get there. God helps us by giving us the Word of God to show us the way. But unfortunately, many of us keep stumping our toes on this dark path because we refuse just to turn on the light. I don't know about you, my sisters or brothers, but stumping your toe in the night can be very painful. Somebody know what I'm talking about. My son still chuckles today about it. I hit my toe one night, and I screamed out, got to be more careful. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. If I had just turned on the light, I could have seen the leg of the bed or the corner of the dresser. Somebody knows about hitting their toe or hitting their knee in the darkness. If I would have turned on a light, I could have just navigated by myself in the dark. But because I decided to get up in the dark and make my journey on my own, I bear the bruises. I bore the bruises then. But even in 2020, some of us can testify to the fact that we bear some bruises. We were hit and stumped our toe through 2020 because we did not choose to turn on the light. Somebody ought to say amen about that. You got some repercussions. You bear some wounds. You got some hurts and some pains because you chose not to turn on the light. I thank God for the light. I thank God that Jesus is the light of the world. I thank God that when all darkness is around me, we got a light that we can turn on. But you have to choose to turn on the light. There is a choice before all of us, darkness or light, narrow or broad. 
We can choose what we want to do. That's good news to me. Because I've learned, and I've got some pains, and I bear some bruises. Lord knows, I don't mind putting myself up on the cross. Because I know I've messed up. There's some things that I've done in my life. If I would have just waited on Jesus, if I would have just turned the light on and allowed him to shine the light in the right direction, I should have gone in. I would not have had the pain of messing up in my house or, or bruising some of my, uh, my loved ones or saying some things that I ought not to have said or have done some things that I should not have said. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise God because I thank God. I thank God in spite of all of my messed up, in spite of all of me choosing in darkness and walking according to the way that I want to. I thank God this morning for grace and for mercy, that God is a God of another chance. Hallelujah. But not only that, he's not only a God of another chance, because somebody knows in here, he's a God of another and another and another and another. I don't know how many days in this year, but he's blessed us over and over and over again. And the Lord knows we've messed up over and over again. But God, with all his mercy, all of his grace still allows us to walk in his path. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. We got to be more careful, my sisters and brothers, as we walk in these dark paths. We don't have to navigate in this dark world on our own. We have the word of God that will lead us and guide us if we choose to allow it to. I am reminded of Israel's journey through the wilderness they were illuminated by a pillar of fire that moved before them on their march. Most of the time, the pillow stood in the center of their camp, over the most holy place of the tabernacle, where during the day it was a pillow of cloud. But when they marched, it went before them to lead the way. And at night, it also illumined their path by becoming a flaming pillar of light in a similar way. Our nighttime passages through the dark and dangerous journeys of this life is illumined by God's Word, the Bible. And that's where our text lands today. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I thank God for that. Here we see how God's Word is pictured both as a lamp and a light. A lamp is for the night. Light shines in the day. C.A. Spurgeon said it like this, we are walkers through the city of this world. We are often called to go out into darkness. Let us never venture there without the light-giving word, lest we slip with our feet. Each man should use the word of God personally, practically, and habitually, that he may see his way and see what lies in it. When darkness settles all upon us and all around us, the word of the Lord, like a flaming torch, reveals our way. This morning, let's look at this passage and see the word of God as our lamp and our light. And let's determine as the psalmist to be faithful to God's direction in our lives. That brings us to our first point. God's word will guide us in our walk. That's verses 105 to 106. Our feet are set in the darkness of the world, but the word is a lamp for them. The picture is one of lanterns on a pole. It provides enough light for each step taken. It provides enough light to show the path in front of us, but not a searchlight to reveal the end. That's what God does. That's God, God is, I tell you, God does some crazy thing. He'll tell us something and only give us a little glimpse into it and expect us to apply faith. God says, listen, go and see that person. God doesn't tell you which direction to go in. He doesn't tell you where to go. He just tells you to go. It's our responsibility to take one step at a time. When God start revealing the light, one step at a time, 
he never gives us the end. Because guess what? If he gave us the end, we probably wouldn't even move because we already got the answer to stuff. But God wants us to apply faith in our situation. And I don't know about you. God has been revealing some things to you in your life. And he's expecting you to take one step at a time. And he will provide light for you if you allow yourself just to step out in faith. You know what faith is, right? You ain't got the evidence of it. It's not been seen. You just go. And, no, and don't worry about where and how you're going to get there. You just trust God. You just believe that, God, I don't have no food. I'm just going to set my table because when I sit down, God, you're going to provide the food for me. Anybody got faith like that? You just say, God, I know you said that you're going to give me a job, but I don't know where the job's going to come from. I'm just going to walk in faith one step at a time. I'm going to do an application. I'm going to call folks. I'm going to seek God. I'm going to look for employment, but I'm stepping out on faith. I'm not seeing it yet. I'm not experience it yet, but God, you're so good. You're so powerful and so faithful. You always come through and always show up. That's what faith is, trusting God. When you can't see God's hand, you just trust God's heart because God will only give you enough to, to challenge you to get from your comfort level to start walking in faith. Amen. Amen. That's for somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about. He's been challenging us. Think of a walking in the woods at night. They're in the woods at night. It is, it's not easy to see anything, even if we have a flashlight. We have not, we do, we, we've not seen the whole trail, right? But we see where we are to place our next step. Likewise, God's words light our path as we walk through the darkness of this world. One step at a time. We may not know what is coming further on down the trail or where the trail will end because of our job is to stay on the path of obedience, where we are and now, and to leave the rest of the trail to God. Only the light of the Word can illumine the path and keep us from stumbling and falling. We find the way we are to go through the Word of God. God's word will not tell us which street to take to work. God's word will not tell us specifically who we are to marry or what we are to do. God's word will not tell us everything that we should not do. But as we understand and learn the principles of God's word, it shines a light to direct us in our decision and gives us the direction that we so desperately need. We need to make a commitment to God's Word. The Word will not supernaturally keep us from making wrong decisions. It will not miraculously block our path if we tend to go a different direction. But if we commit ourselves to it, we have the promise of God's direction. That's what Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 is all about. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. God says, listen, just trust me. I'll give you enough light and enough direction for the next step. The word of God guides us. It guides us not only in our walk, but it also guides us in our weakness. Verse 7, look right there. The psalmist says, Affliction came from the outside. Believers are not immune to afflictions in this life, regardless of what some may say about it. We don't live on a flowery bed of ease as Christians. Christians don't tiptoe through the tulips. We are in a war, y'all. Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We all bear some wounds of afflictions, but thank God, thank God, we don't look like we have that what we've been through. I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. Again, we see the psalmist recognizing that only God 
can deliver him from the trials of life. Psalmist says again, God, you know all the stuff that's going on around me. You know the pain and the afflictions that I've been through. But God, I'm going to trust in your word. I'm going to put all my hope in your word. And I don't know about you. There's something about putting your trust and hope in the word of God. When affliction breaks out in my life, when I'm so painful and I got so much going on in my life, when I feel like I hit rock bottom, there's something about the word of God. When the word of God starts filling up and coming up and bubbling up in my soul, there's something about the word of God. And I don't know about you, when I'm down and out, when I'm not feeling like I'm a Christian, when I don't feel like I, I should be in the, uh, on the team anymore, when I feel like I just messed up. There's something about the Word of God, and I get excited because I, I know that I felt like giving up many of times, but the Word of God came to me. And the psalmist said, just like in the psalmist, the psalmist said that the Word of God revived him. And I don't know about you, there's something about the reviving of the Word of God. When the Word of God hits me, when the Word of God gets up in your spirit, there's something revival about the Word of God. It will make you run when nobody's chasing you. It'll make you cry when nobody's bothering you. It... I'm telling you, the word of God, it, it revivals come from God and his word. God's word will guide us in our weakness. When there's affliction all around us, when you feel like you've dropped it, when you messed up, you got to run to the word of God. The word of God will pick you up. I tell you, revival comes from God and his word. You know, many of us run to all kinds of places when we're down and out. Some of us look at our horoscope. Some of us look for a Dr. Phil to give us the answer. Some of us used to look at Oprah for the answer. Some of us look at Ellen. We go to all kinds of places looking for something to pick us up when we down on our journey. But I encourage you, my sisters and brothers, you ought to search the Word of God. There's power in the Word of God. There's healing in the Word of God. There's deliverance in the Word of God. God word, the word of God guides us. Not only that, does it revive us? In verse 108, it guides us in our worship. Look what the psalmist said. In the midst of his affliction, in the midst of him going through what he's going through, there's something about worship. I tell you, there's something about worship. Sometimes I come in and I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel because I've been through trials and tribulations all week long. All hell has broke out, had a fight, an argument, or whatever. I don't feel like worshiping. But the psalmist, in spite of his affliction, look what the Bible says right here. He says, Lord, accept my worship. Accept it. I beseech thee. Our worship is offered unto God. And we should pray that it would be acceptable unto God. Is your worship this morning acceptable unto God? Did you come in this morning with worship on your heart? Is your worship pleasing to God this morning? Can God smile at your worship this morning? Did you come in like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Did you come just to say, God, thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. And you know, God, you've been good. Okay. Okay, period. I don't know about you, but I am so grateful that I got another privilege, another opportunity. When I look over 2020, people have died from COVID. People have died in general. People have gone through so much more than I'm going through. And God loved me so much that he even allowed me to make it into the house of worship one more time. I didn't come to sit here. I didn't come for a show. I came to give God the glory, the honor, and the praises. And guess what? You ain't got to praise him with me. I'll praise him all by myself. Up. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to your name, God. We worship you. <laughs> Listen. Listen, the psalmist says, look, it, it ain't about me. He said, except my worship. 
Lord, William Calver, Calver say, states it this way. It's a grace. It, it, it's it's a, a great grace that the Lord should accept anything from us. If we consider these three things. First, who the Lord is. Next, what are we? Thirdly, what is it we had to give unto the Lord? As for the Lord, he is all sufficient and stands in need of nothing. We can give him nothing. Our goodness extends not to the Lord. As for us, we are poor creatures living by his liberality, yea, begging from all the rest of his creation, from the uh, sun and the moon, from the air, the water, and the earth, from the fowls and the fishes, yea, from the worms, some give us light, some meat, some clothes, and are such beggars as we meet to give to a king. And thirdly, if we well consider, what is it that we give? Have we anything to give that which we have received from him? And whereof we may say, like David, O oh Lord, all things are of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Again and again and again, everything that you gave us, God, it came from you. God, everything that we have, it came from you, God. You deserve all the worship, all the glory, and all the honor. And it blows my mind that a heavenly God will, will even allow us sinners to call on his holy name. It blows my mind that the holy one would even deal with the unholy, the righteous with the unrighteous. But I thank God that we have this great opportunity to worship the Lord. And David says, let our worship, Lord, let it be pleasing in your sight. David, at this time, in his great necessity, having no other sacrifice unto the Lord, offered the calves of his lips, but no doubt, when he might, he would have offered more. Free will offering of the mouth. Our praise, our praise, my sisters and brothers, should always come freely from the heart. Never force. I don't need to be pumped up, or I don't need to be primed up, or even told to praise the Lord. If you've been through what I've been through, you would be praising them too. If you knew my story, you would be praising them also. He's seen me through many things, many dangers, toys, and snares. You don't know my story. You don't understand why I'm loud, why I praise the Lord. Don't, get, don't look at me like I'm funny. I'm just praising the Lord because he's been good to me. Has the Lord been good to anybody? <laughs> listen, listen. My praise, sisters and brother, is for real. I've been through too much not to praise him. He brought me through too much not to praise him. He picked me up, turned me around, and placed my feet on solid ground. He found me in a dark place, on a dark path. All the way down, many of you don't even know where I came from. Southwest Philadelphia in Philadelphia. One of the hardest areas when I was growing up. If you knew my story, if you knew where God brought me from, no father, mother struggling with seven children, struggling to make it, making it one meal at a time. Yeah, depended on welfare. Yeah, depended on housing. Yeah, lost our light sometime. Yeah, lost our God. If you knew my story, you would be praising them too. And here I am, that he would snatch me out of darkness, bring me into the marvelous light, allow me to go to college, allow me to go to seminary, get a master's degree, work on my— if you knew my story, you'd be praising them too for me. I wish I had somebody would just praise the Lord for me. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you. For I wish I had some. Mm, mm. Our praise should always come freely and from the heart, never for it. And that's what I like about the Lord. I wish I could take the mic around. All of us got a story in here. All of us got something that we can shout about in this place this morning. I ain't got to force you up. I ain't, all you got to think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done. <laughs> 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 
The psalmist says, teach me thy judgments. As we worship God, we also need to be open for his instructions through the word. You know, folks want to get excited. They want to be happy. They won't just want to hear a word that tickle their fancy. Nobody wants to hear a word that cuts to the bone. Nobody wants to hear about hell anymore. People want to be excited. They just want their fancies tickled. They want their ears tickled. They want to be in a comfortable situation. It's all right as long as the worship team is singing a song. We are hallelujah, praise the Lord. But when the word starts cutting or when the man of God starts preaching a hard word, folks shrink back. They don't want to hear that type of stuff no more. But our worship should not just be a, a worship of going up the scales of emotion. And then when you come down from the scales of emotion, you don't even know how to walk straight. You don't even know why you went up. The man said Humpty Dumpty, and you ran up the hill with Humpty Dumpty. When you came down, you don't know why Humpty Dumpty fell. All you know is that he said, we had a good time in the Word. He said, what, well, what did he preach about? Well, I don't know, but we had a good time in the Lord. You ought to know. Not only should our worship be about worshiping the Lord, but we ought to ask the Lord. You should have came in this morning. Lord, I need a word from the Lord. I need to hear a word from the Lord. I come to worship you, but I need a word to make it through this week, Lord. In fact, I need a word to get me through this day. I don't know what tomorrow may hold. I don't, yesterday is gone. I need a word for today. Hallelujah. And I came this morning to hear from the Lord. I want the Lord to speak to us. Listen, listen, worship. You should always know why you are worshiping. You should always know. You should be asking God to speak to us. We need to hear from you. We need a word from the Lord. Our worship experience will be unfulfilling if both are not included. We offer worship and receive instruction. That leads me to my next point. God's word guards us. God's word guards us, verses 109 to 110. By calming our fears, it guards us by calming our fears, verses 109. The Bible says that my soul is continually in my hand. The phrase speaks of being in a fearful condition, similar when David went against Goliath. 1 Samuel, verse 19, verse 5. For he did put his life in his hand, and he slew the Philistine, and the Lord brought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against an innocent blood to slay David without a cause? But in times of peril, God's word is there to comfort and encourage by hindering our foes, God's word will calm our fears. There's something about resting on the word of God, trusting the word of God. All of God's promises are what? Yea, and what else? Amen. You got to trust God's word in spite of where you're at, what your situation is. You got to rest and believe God's word. You got to be like Jacob. You got to hold on to the word of God until God blesses you. You may come out wounded, you might come out limping, but guess what? There's a blessing on the way. You got to hold on to God's word. I don't know what you're going through, my sisters and brothers, and I don't know what 2021 may bring in your direction, but I do know this. God's word will guide you. It will help you walk through it. It'll enhance your worship. It will calm your fears no matter what you are getting ready to face in 2021. And that's good news that God provides his word for us. We ain't got to go at it by ourselves. The word of God will guide us and direct us right through 2021. I thank God for that because, listen, also the psalmist says, but in the times of peril, God's word is there to comfort and encourage by hindering our foes. 110, verse 110 there, uh, the enemy is seen here laying traps and in an attempt 
to gain the victory. It's through God's word that we can gain the advantage and avoid the snares. That's what the Bible is saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. We are not ignorant of the strategies of our enemy. And God's word will protect us. It's not the laying of bait that hurts the fish, if the fish do not bite. There's going to be snares all through 2021. It's going to try to trap you. It's going to try to get you off the path that God has called you to. But I thank God that one year ago, God gave me this great privilege and this great opportunity to stand right here in this sacred pulpit and to help us to put our focus on Christ. I don't care what comes and what kinds of snares, what kinds of traps. You got to stay focused on Jesus Christ. Don't turn to the left nor turn to the right. Stay focused on Jesus Christ because there's going to be all kinds of snares, not only for you individually, but also for us as a church. We have to stay focused, y'all. We got to continue to focus on one another. That's what Pastor Stephen would say. We got to care for one another, do all the one another's to each other. We may not be able to come into small groups. We may not be able to come into people's homes anymore, but you can link up online with one person so that they don't fall in the snares and the traps of the devil. You can call somebody. I haven't seen you for a while. I haven't heard from you. You can do all those one another to one another to help us not to fall into the snares of <laughs> listen Thomas uh, uh, Thomas Watson put it this way our, our distress should strengthen us in the faith the psalmist was in constant danger his life was taken in hand against the forces of evil to cope with this situation he remembered the word and his promises. You know, when you're in a storm, you have to remember God's promises. When you're having a valley experience, you need to remember God's promises. When you don't see a way out, you need to remember God's promises. When you feel like giving up and giving in, you ought to remember the word of God. When you're just tired and want to walk away, you ought to remember God's promises. When you are hurting, you ought to remember God's promises. When you don't feel love, you ought to cling to God's promises. When you just, just downright discouraged, you ought to cling to God's word. My sisters and brothers, God said in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I will be with you even until the end of the ages. No matter what you are going through and no matter what you are going to face, you can hold on to God's word. He will see you through. Amen. Amen. That's something to praise God for. Lastly, brings me to my last point. God's words gladden us. It gladdens us. Verses 111 to verse 112. The Bible says, our happy heritage. Verse 111. God-inspired word is a heritage from forefathers in the faith who lived by it and was preserved by it for all generations. It's an example. The examples all through the Bible, they were written for us. It gives us something to rejoice over. The psalmist had trained to keep the Lord's statues in his heart all his life and forevermore. My Christ, the living word, the Bible, the written word, will abide forever. Our houses will pass away. Our bank accounts will pass away. Our earthly achievements and reputations will pass away. All the stuff that we've accumulated will pass away. Everything, my sisters and brothers, will pass away. Only the word of God will not pass away. The Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word shall remain. 
That's all we have, y'all, is the Word of God. And I thank God that the Bible says that God honors his word above his name. That means his word means a whole lot to him. He will never go against his word because if he goes against his word, he ceases from being God. I tell you, the word shall remain. Are you glad about that this morning? I'm glad about that. But not only that, the Bible says in verse 112 here, our heavenly home. It's faithfulness to the word will keep us mindful of our ultimate destination. There is an end to all of this. And it isn't six feet under or becoming a part of some cosmic force or nature. We are on our way somewhere, y'all. We are sojourners. We are just traveling through this dark and and decaying world. We have a home prepared for us, and it is always and is waiting for us. We're just traveling through. We're going to have trials and tribulations down. We're going to have heartaches and pain. We're going to lose some ones. We're going to go through some things down here. But I thank God that Hebrews chapter 12 says that we got a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us that can testify about being faithful to the Word of God. We got witnesses that have gone through some stuff that we would just look to the Word of God. It will give us examples how to walk through our trials and tribulations. You ought to consult the Bible. You ought to look at Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith, and all that those, those sojourners went through, all the trials and tribulations they went through. And guess what? We, they can't crown him until we get there. Isn't that good news? The party don't start until we... <laughs> I could preach that right there. That, that would get me... <laughs> we have a great cloud of witness cheering us on. We can rejoice because God's word guides us. God's word guards us. God's word gladdens us. I don't know about you, but I can't make it without God's word. That's why every morning... While the dew is still on the roses, while I still have sleep in my eyes, I get up early in the morning and I look to the Lord from whence cometh my help. I take time early in the morning, as tired as I might be, not feeling like it. I creep down to my my place down in the basement, my, my closet that I go to, and I seek the Lord's face. I don't know about you, but I can't make it without the Word of God. So that's why every morning when I get down in His presence, I sit before the Lord on His Word. I meditate on the Word of God. I seek the Lord's voice through His Word because I need guidance. I need direction. And I can't leave God's presence without Him dress me in His holy armor. So I ask the Lord, before I get up out of this presence, Lord, gird my loins with truth because I need your truth, God. I can't make it. There's all kinds of lies out there. I don't want to fall into a lie. So, God, I need your truth, God. The truth is, son, you are saved by grace. <laughs> I wish you knew the truth of God. You are Mm, you are a king's kid. You are a royal priesthood. God just starts speaking to me the truth. I need to be girded, my loins girded in the truth of God. But then I don't stop there because I ask God to shod my feet with the preparation of gospel of peace. Because wherever I leave, God, wherever I stand, I want to leave some peace there. I want to leave your presence there. But then, God, I ask you to put on the right breastplate of righteousness on me because I am right just because of you. It's nothing I've done. All of my righteousness but filthy rags. I know I messed up. I know I dropped the ball. I know I ain't worthy. God, but then God, I need the helmet of salvation. I need to know, God, that there's nothing can snatch my salvation. I am saved. Saved divine. I am saved. But not only that, but not only that, I asked the Lord, Lord, allow me to take up the shield of faith because the devil's going to send all kinds of fiery darts to me this morning. So God, allow me to dip my shield in the Word of God. So when every fiery dart, I don't know what direction they come, so I'm going to walk circumspectly because the roaring lion may come from any direction. So Lord, allow me to keep my shield up of faith, God, because I believe that you're able, God, to keep me from falling. But not only that, not only that, my sister and brother, I asked the 
Lord, before I leave in the morning, Lord, allow me to take up the sword of the word. The God, your word. God, I need your word, God. Every step I take, I need your word, God. Every word I speak, God, I need your word, God. I need your word. Lord, help me to apply your word this morning. God, help me. God, help me to walk in your word. In fact, God, I ask you to allow me to order, order my steps in your word. Every step I take, Lord, this morning, allow my steps to be ordered in your word. God, everything I, I need you. But not only that, not only that, Lord, help me, help me, Lord, to apply your word to God, to use your word correctly. God, Lord, I need your word, God. I'm dependent on your word this morning. God, I need you. That's what I do every morning. How do you start your morning up? Do you consult the word of God every morning that you get up, or do you just get up on your own and say, I got a word for myself? I need God's direction. I need him to deliver me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I need the word of God. And I encourage you, I implore you, my sisters and brothers. This is the application. This is where the rubber meets the road for the Christian. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's one thing for you to come in here and depend on the preacher to give you the word. Is this your only fill-up time? You come Sunday morning, like it's a gas station, and fill me up and expect it to keep you through the week. You ought to get a feeling every morning. You ought to be down in God's presence. And maybe you might not be a morning person. Maybe you might be a night owl. I don't know when your time is, but you ought to know your time, that you spend time with the Lord. Because guess what? I heard from a preacher. Those days, those times that we don't spend with the Lord, we will never have that opportunity again. And time at the time, we let stuff and time pass by. But you know, God, you know, has an expiration clock for us all. And I want everything that God has for me. I want to be doing all of God's will while I'm down here. I want to please the Lord while I'm down here. I don't want to wait to heaven. I want to be used by God down here. And the only way that is, you get direction from the Word of God. You have to sit under the Word. You got to meditate on the Word. The psalmist says, listen, morning and night, listen, it's like a cow chewing the Word over and over again. I just meditate on it. Don't you know I, I've been walking this walk for over 25 years. And even today, I've never preached this text. And this text spoke to me. God's word is so good, y'all. It, it's so many true, it's so practical. So, God just keeps birthing babies over and over. You just keep reading the word. Man, God, I didn't know that was in there. Man, God, that just touched my soul. Anybody ever had that experience that you saw a text that you never and read it and it like it just leaped off the pages to you like, wow, God, those are the type of experiences, Manoa, you on, on, online, those are the type of experience, those are the type of encounters we ought to have with God by ourselves. Because guess what? If we all are having those encounters every morning, guess what? By the time we come to Sunday, oh my God, I got so much word in me. Man, God just been blessing me all week. All this praise is all bubbling up in me. I got a testimony. I got to, I got to say something. I got to shout. I couldn't do it on my job. They would look at me funny. I was on the elevator and it started coming out and I had to push it down. There were some people around me and the words started bubbling up in me. I, I couldn't let it out. But when you came into the... <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God, oh my God, the word is starting to feel good to me. Oh my, mm, mm, mm. I, oh, oh my God, oh, I asked the Lord, oh my God, his word is just so good. His word, my sisters and brothers, is so good to us. And we ought to uh, take advantage 
of reading God's word. You know, many of us don't even know that we are winners. Many of us don't even know that we are victorious already. Many of us haven't even read the back of the Bible. We win, y'all. Many of us walk around like we're losers, that we've already lost the battle, given up and given in. If you would just read your Bible, read your Bible. It's the B-I-B-L-E, right? You know, as basic as that was back in the day, you know, it's the truth, right? How can you not consult your Bible? It's God speaking to us. We sit and allow God to speak to us. And God has a word for all of us. Who are you going to consult? What are you going to consult this last week for 2021? Many of us make resolutions. We want to lose weight, you know, yada, yada. We will get our, our credit. We want to, you know, get our debt down. Uh, we want to get a better job. Uh, we want to be kinder. We want to be nicer. All these resolutions we make. When it comes to the Word of God, you can't make a resolution with it. It has to be a lifestyle change. Your life has to change. You have to be sold out for the Word of God. You have to love the Word of God. If not, you won't run to it. We run to everything else we love. But if the Word of God is not, if you have not grasped it, it's not grasped you, you will not love it. You have to desire. Can't nobody make you do that. And that's where, you know, I thank Pastor Stephan. The challenge for us this year, we have this great opportunity. And I'm asking each one of you, not only here in the sanctuary, but you that are online, that can't make it into the sanctuary. This year, we have this great opportunity to go through the Word of God, line by line, precept by precept, step by step. What will be your testimony? Will you sign up for it? Will you really do what God is calling you to do? This is the challenge for the believers. Can't nobody make you do this? Those things have been sitting right there on that organ, that piano, for the longest. Have you even stopped by to pick up one? Have you even went out to you version to even consider going through the Bible this year with us? God's Word. Do you love God's Word, my sisters and brothers? I can't say that enough. I'm excited what I'm going to learn, how I'm going to grow, how I'm going to mature in the Word of God this year, and this opportunity for us to encourage one another in the Word of God. Somebody ought to say, praise the Lord. I sign up. I'm... Amen. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, because it's the, the week after uh, Christmas, and uh, it wasn't a Christmas message. I, I could have preached uh, the at the party, and we could have been celebrating here, still worshiping. But what a great opportunity to worship around the Word of God this morning, that we have this great opportunity to allow the Word this year, 2021, to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And today, I want to challenge the church to do that. Allow God to lead you and guide you through His Word this year. But not only that, my sisters and brothers, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need the light. You are walking in darkness. You continue to stump your toe over and over again. Aren't you tired, sick and tired of going through what you've been going through? Today, you can receive the light that will light your path, that will give you direction, will put you on the right path, and that is to heaven. But you have to accept Jesus Christ. Can't nobody make you do this. Can't nobody force you to do it. You have to see within yourself that you need a Savior. And I offer unto you our Savior. I tell you, many folks in here can testify this morning that Jesus has been the best decision that I ever made. Can I get a witness to that? Has Jesus been the best? 
Amen. There's plenty of folks clapping right now, and you out, out there in the line. Has Jesus been the best decision you made? If not, I encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning. And you can simply do it by this. Just pray this prayer after me. Father, I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. I ask, Father, that you would come into my life and save me. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Lord, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for accepting me in your body. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer, I encourage you to continue to seek the Word of God, to seek all the believers that will help you walk this walk, that you might grow, glow, and become all that God has called you to do. And even if you're in here, you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins. You ought to uh, ask Jesus to come into your life and save you. Amen. 2021 is not a guarantee. You ought to have your house in order. You never know. The Bible says that your life is like a vapor. It's here one moment and gone the next. And if you don't know that you are saved, my sisters and brothers, don't go through 2021 the same way. Just ask me, ask Pastor Stephan. We'll walk you through it. We'll share the scriptures. We'll help you that you might have a firm foundation that you know that you know that you know that you know that you are saved. Amen? Amen. Let's give God some praises.